This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. And welcome to the GSMC Sports Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, it's finally the end of the week. We're finally here. Nonetheless, let me tell you what's going on today. All right, Jimmy Butler turned down a four-year, $110 million extension from the Minnesota Timberwolves. All right, what does this mean? I'll give you my thoughts on what it means for this first segment. All right, Isaiah Thomas also signing with the Denver Nuggets. We'll be talking about that too. Second segment, we're going to get a little bit more into all the World Cup stuff going on this weekend. We're going to talk about England, Belgium, all right, their game tomorrow. We'll talk about, um, how do you say, France and Croatia, the final on Sunday. Third segment, DeMarco Murray has chosen to retire. I'll talk about that career he's had and why the running backs just seem to get thrown away once they hit 30. Okay, and then for the fourth segment... I will be talking about anything else going on in the world of sports. We had Kevin Anderson winning the longest semifinal match in Wimbledon history against John Isner. He's now in the final, the man who knocked off Roger Federer. Right now, we got Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic playing against each other currently in their semifinal matchup. I believe Djokovic is currently up. He won the first set. Nadal's currently leading in the second set as I am recording this. All right, so we'll be talking about all that along with the MLB scores from yesterday and anything else going on in the world of sports. As you know, we always do. All right. So that's how the show's going to go. Okay. And with the whole Jimmy Butler thing... Okay, let me let me double check what his current contract is at right now. But nonetheless, I mean, it seems that even though they were a pretty good team with him, Towns and Wiggins to get playing together, it seems that Jimmy, like, because you know what, we're in the age, the era of these new players coming in aren't guys who they're not Kobe Bryant's or anything like that. Okay, meaning they're not guys who are going to go spend their time in the gym constantly or anything like that. They're not, they don't have that competitive nature anymore. Okay, they're just guys who want to go to work, get paid, and have fun after that. All right. And I think that that maybe rubs Jimmy Butler the wrong way because Jimmy Butler, we all know, is a guy who pretty much spend his time in the gym 24-7, working out, and getting better at his game. Okay. That's always been Jimmy Butler's way. All right. I mean, we've had stories, just constant stories about him. Just like I said, I think there was one summer where he literally went to a basketball gym every day, and that's all he spent his time doing. Didn't go anywhere else or anything like that. Just constantly stayed in the gym. All right. And like I said, now you got Towns and Wiggins. They're younger guys, all right? They like to do the younger guy stuff. And I think Jimmy is more so focusing. He, he's one of those old school players, Jimmy Butler, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, he's a guy who would do well on a team like the Spurs, a team like the Celtics, okay? Teams who are trying to, like teams who, their goal is to go out and win, okay? They don't do all that other stuff, all right? And I think that's where he belongs. Not on a team like Minnesota, I don't think a team like LA, the Lakers would suit him. Even a team like Houston, I don't think would really work, okay? He's got to go to one of those teams where, you know what, it's just basketball here, that's all we're doing, all right? Because I think that's the kind of spot he needs to end up. They'd be perfect for him. All right, and I mean, if Jimmy Butler, if Minnesota could see that Jimmy Butler's not going to be resigning with him, maybe you do call up the Spurs and see, hey, what does Jimmy Butler for Kawhi Leonard sound like? Okay, I'm not sure what each each of their contracts looking like or anything like that, but I'm sure that maybe you send. I don't know. You can't do a player for player type swap, can you? I mean, I figure that maybe the Spur, uh, the uh, the Timberwolves would have to send a first round pick over too, possibly. Okay. But nonetheless, I mean, that's something I could see happening also. I mean, like I said yesterday, we had the 
Raptors op- are becoming favorites in Vegas to uh, trade for Kawhi Leonard. So, I mean, maybe that's still going on. And, of course, this whole trading for Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler thing is just something I came up with in my head. So, I mean, that's not even something that's really true or anything like that. All right. Jimmy Butler is an unrestricted free agent in 2020. Let me see. Can he opt out after this season? Yeah, he's got a 2019 player option. So he can opt out for the 2019 season. And, I mean, if I'm Jimmy Butler, I'm opting out. Okay, because he's set to make 19 mil, nearly 20 million in 2019. I'm sure Jimmy Butler could, can get way more than that. All right, Jimmy Butler, I'd say, is a max player. So you get around 25 to 30 mil a year. All right, so I do think he's going to be opting out. That's probably why he's not signing his contract extension. And there have been rumblings as far as him wanting to play with Kyrie and Kyrie wanting to play with Jimmy Butler. Okay? They'll both be free agents unless if Kyrie Irving doesn't choose to extend with Boston after the season. All right, it's the coming offseason. Maybe they could team up and go somewhere else, or maybe they could team up and play in Boston. But it'd be tough because I'm not really sure where there's a fit for Jimmy Butler on the Celtics. I mean... He'd probably have to play, come in for a guy like Jalen Brown. And Jimmy Butler, any team he goes to, he's going to be a must starter. So, I'm ex- like I'm saying, you'd probably have to move Jalen Brown to the bench, possibly. No, you'd have to because you have Gordon Hayward and Jason Tatum. Seems like he's way too good to put on the bench. All right, I'm not sure how that would work out. But nonetheless, I mean, Minnesota, obviously, since the Garnett trade, have been terrible up until this point. All right, and it just seems like they finally got it together. You finally got your star in Jimmy Butler. Right? You got two um, developing could be future superstars in Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins. And it just seems like now you might lose Jimmy Butler. And we saw what this team looked like without him. All right. They went from being the three seed to barely making the playoffs. All right. As good as Towns and Wiggins are, they haven't really shown that, yeah, we could be the leaders of a team and get us to the playoffs. Jimmy Butler can do that. All right. So it's going to be real interesting to see what exactly goes down with Minnesota. And like I said, I mean, they just started getting good. It looks like, though, they're going to be um, extending Carl Anthony Towns if they haven't already. And let me see. Have they already or not? I think they're just looking at it right now. Let's check real quick if I can find his current contract situation. All right. But nonetheless, I mean, yeah, it's just Jimmy Butler needs to go to one of those teams where all they do is play basketball. You're not really going to have that outside noise or anything like that. All right, Spurs, the Celtics. Who else is like that? Um, Maybe the Lakers since LeBron is there. But nonetheless, I mean, like I said, I don't really see that being a fit. So, yeah. Towns only got two more years left on his deal. So he's going to be signing an extension too. I mean, it'd be idiotic if the Timberwolves didn't re-up him. But obviously it looks like they're going to. I can't remember exactly what the numbers are looking like on his new contract once he does sign it. But nonetheless, yeah, he will be extending soon. I'm sure of it. All right, so, I mean, that's going on. Like I said, Minnesota, they got to trade carefully here because you just don't want to go back to being in the basement and not making the playoffs year after year with just Towns and Wiggins. All right, they got to be building towards something, so we'll see. But nonetheless, now you got Isaiah Thomas, all right? question was, where is he going to be signing? He ends up signing with the Denver Nuggets for one year on the league minimum. He's going to be making $2 million this year. All right, that is a bit of a tough one for him. Okay, I mean, we're only a year removed from him wanting to bring truck, saying he's a max player. And I mean, whether or not he was a max player in Boston will never be answered. But I do think he was due a lot of money. Okay, if he doesn't get that hip injury, then yeah, Boston's paying him for sure. Is it the max? I'm not entirely sure. But nonetheless, he's going to be making more than $2 million. Okay, he'd be in that 20 to $25 million range. All right. Because of that hip injury, though, you have Boston trade him over to Cleveland. He misses half of that season. All right, comes back for a month. Doesn't look great. All right, comes back with the Lake, or gets traded to the Lakers. Plays okay for the little time he was there, and then they end up shutting him down. Okay, now he's only making or only playing for a year on a two million dollar deal. All right, I do think that this is probably the best place he could have ended up, though. Okay, because me personally, I don't think he'll be starting. Minnesota knows what they have in Jamal Murray. All right. I mean, it'd be kind of pointless to bring in a 30-year-old Isaiah Thomas coming off of a hip injury. just throwing him into the starting um, starting five when you already have your young core that you're building with. Okay, I feel like this is kind of like a Mike Malone. Uh, Mike Malone and Isaiah. Have, Mike Malone's coached Isaiah in Sacramento, so they know 
each other pretty well and all that. I mean, they work pretty well. I know Mike Malone wanted Isaiah still in Sacramento, but obviously the front office figured that Isaiah wasn't worth a four-year, $30 million contract. And can you believe that? The Kings could have went forward with DeMarcus Cousins, Rudy Gay, and Isaiah Thomas, but they figured, you know what? Isaiah Thomas isn't worth what he's asking for. Four years, $30 million. Okay. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. You'd You'd have a real good player who was averaging near 20 for you, a game on less than $10 million. All right, and you don't want him? I mean, come on now. It's a bit ridiculous. But nonetheless, I mean, they ended up getting rid of him. He goes to the Suns. Ends up with the Celtics, has one of the greatest offensive seasons ever. And now he's got to have a decent season here. I'm figuring he's probably going to get about 15 to 20 points a game with the Nuggets if his hip is healed up like he says. Okay, he claims that his hip, there's no more... Um, How do you say, like, you can't feel anything anymore, it doesn't hurt or anything like that. So if his hip is fine, and he's averaging about 15 to 20 a game, maybe up for six man of the year considerations, he could get maybe a two-year, $30 million deal, maybe a three-year, $45 type million deal, okay, after this contract. Isaiah Thomas isn't a bad player, by any means. All right, let me see if I could pick up his stats over his career. Let's check real quick. Okay, so he's a two-time All-Star, made the All-NBA team, 2016-2017, wasn't sure if that was first, second, or third team, was made the All-Rookie team his rookie year, alright, let's see, his first year was Sacramento, okay, only started 37 games, had averaged nearly 12 points, 2012 he averaged 14, 2013 he averaged 20, okay, then that's when they get rid of him, which... I don't, I don't understand when you got Isaiah Thomas literally getting better each year and you trade him. It makes no sense to me. Okay, so 2014, he ends up playing with Phoenix. He already averages 15 points in his little stint with Phoenix. Then he goes to Boston. He's averaging 19. All right, 2015 is his first full season with the Celtics. He ends up starting 79 games that season. All right, averages 22 points. Makes the all-star team. 2016 is when he averages 29. All right. I mean, I'm looking at it. I don't understand why no one's ever given him a chance. All right. Average 29 in 2016 with Boston on, let's see, shot 46% from the field. All right. 38 from three. Let's see. He averaged six assists. He was averaging 30 and six that year, nearly 30 and six. Okay, ends up going to Cleveland. Obviously, that doesn't work out. And with the Lakers, in those 17 games that he played, already averaged nearly 16 points, 5 assists, shot the ball, 32% from 3, 38% from the field. All right. So, obviously, like I said, I mean, in Sacramento, he was doing fine. For some reason, they felt he wasn't worth what he was asking for. And since then, he's been pretty much chasing that big contract. All right. Isaiah Thomas isn't a bad player by any means. People just tend to look past him because he's short, which is ridiculous. All right, but nonetheless, if he's averaging around 16 to 20 this year off the bench with the Nuggets, he'll get that deal that he wants. All right, so we'll see if it happens, but nonetheless, I mean, he deserves it. So, like I said, we'll see, but nonetheless, we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to get into full-on World Cup mode for that second segment. going to talk about England, Belgium. Okay, you're going to talk about France, Croatia, and just get my thoughts on the tournament as a whole since we get, it's going to be wrapping up this weekend, sadly. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. Spent that first segment talking about Jimmy Butler and Isaiah Thomas. Now we move on to the World Cup. All right, we got the third place game going on on Saturday, the final going on on Sunday. All right, spent a little bit yesterday talking about Croatia and France, but nonetheless, we do have the third place game also. Okay. And that game between England and Belgium, like I said yesterday, I mentioned, I think that that's going to be one where Belgium's going to win by a score of like 3-1 to one or something like that if both teams are playing their starters. All right. If it's the second team playing, then I mean, guys are going to want to go and play well because they haven't really got too many minutes in this tournament. All right. But nonetheless, I mean... I'm not even sure that England is completely over that World Cup loss yet in the semifinal of Croatia. Okay. And that's something where, yeah, at least you still get to play in the third place game, but it's not the final. And you knew that you could have done a whole lot better against Croatia than you actually did. All right. Because, I mean, I'll admit it, Gareth Southgate, Southgate did, I feel, have some questionable decisions in that game. Okay, I think taking off Raheem Sterling was maybe a mistake considering the fact that he's been one of your biggest creators on the team. Yeah, I get it. He hasn't really scored, but nonetheless, that's a job for Harry Kane to do. Okay, you shouldn't be relying on Raheem Sterling to get you your goals. All right, it should be Harry Kane. I mean, even in that game, Harry Kane did struggle to get in the back of the net. I mean, he was literally right next to the goal. All right, and he still couldn't put it in the back. Okay, and let me check. Let me check something real quick. All right, but nonetheless, yeah, I mean, taking out Sterling and throwing in Rashford, I'm not sure how much I like that one right there. Okay, maybe you take out, I get maybe you want to leave Ali, Deli Ali, and Jesse Lingard in, but it's just Raheem Sterling was doing well to create. Okay, and when you when they took him out, it seems they lost, they lost all that creativity. All right, they were struggling big time. Okay. Throwing in Danny Rose and all that when you needed attackers. Okay, you could tell from the second half on that Croatia was going to get their goal. All right. And I just feel, I mean, they didn't sub on. They subbed in Rashford, okay, as far as their first three subs. Then you go with Danny Rose, Danny Rose and Eric Dyer. And then you don't sub in Jamie Vardy until it's pretty much too late in the 112th minute. All right. If anything, it should have been Rashford and Vardy coming on. Okay, and let me check who else they left off the bench or left on the bench. I mean, maybe a Ruben Loftus cheek, possibly. Okay, I mean, like I said, I'm okay with Vardy and Rashford coming in, but I feel like they needed more attack. Okay, subbing on Rose and Dyer. I mean, I get it's a long game and all that, but you got to get the goals. Okay, so either way, we're moving on from that. But nonetheless, I think it's just something where England was so close and. It's just, they just came up short. All right. Of course, they still got a young team and a young core. So, I mean, going forward, they're not done. Okay. I would not be surprised if England put up a good showing in the next Euro tournament. All right. But nonetheless, against Belgium, I just feel like Belgium can come away from that France match with their heads held up a little bit higher than England. Because Belgium did play the more informed team. They did play the better team. Okay. Compared to England. And of course, Belgium, it's not like they were just completely dominated. It's just they couldn't get the ball in the back of the net. Okay, Croatia from the second half and even extra time dominated England. Okay. But nonetheless, I just think that Belgium probably feels more that they have something left to prove. Okay. I think Belgium, of course, you would have wanted to win, made it to the, make it to the final. But of course, you come away with a third place trophy if you're Belgium. And that's a little, obviously, like I said, you want to win it. But that'll give you something to hang your head up by on. All right. I mean, you did play on the toughest side of the bracket. England had to play Sweden, okay, Colombia without Hamas, and then they lost to Croatia, which was the best team they had faced up until that point. And people were going to say, oh, they played Belgium in the third group stage game. Yeah, Belgium didn't play the first team, whereas Belgium had to beat a Japan team, all right, who did play well. You beat Brazil, and you come away with a 1-0 loss against France, all right? Not much you can do there. And as far as France goes, I mean, this could be the beginning of a future dynasty. All right. 
I mean, obviously that's got to start with them beating Croatia on Sunday. But nonetheless, I mean, I've talked about the young team that they got. I mean, they're the second youngest team in the tournament. Okay. How can you not expect them to become a dynasty? I mean, it's a, it's a bit ridiculous. Let me see if I can pull it up once again. All right. But nonetheless, I mean, guys like Mbappe, look at this. Okay. Mbappe, 19. Griezmann's got one more. Dembele's got a couple more World Cups. Pogba's got one more World Cup at the very least. Lamar's got a couple. Conte's got one more at the least. All right. I mean, this whole team is young. The defense has a couple more World Cups in them, and that's huge. All right. So, I mean, going forward, yeah. France could win this tournament. They could also win the Euro, and they could win 2022, too, in Qatar. And I saw, too, it's now official. That's going to be from November 21st to December 18th. It's going to be weird because usually you get the club seasons going on at that time. I mean, are they going to take a complete break? Or is it going to be one where, kind of like how the MLS is doing right now, all right? Sure, you send, and I don't even think the um, leagues in the Europe can even do this, just considering the fact that you'd lose so much talent. All right. Whereas MLS, I mean, not too many players get picked to go to the World Cup. Let's call it like it is. All right. I mean, you got Tottenham missing nine out of their top 11 players. How do you go forward with that? All right. You can't. You're going to lose a whole bunch of games. So it will affect the season. So I'm curious to see if maybe the Premier League, uh, the league and all that, take their little winter break during the World Cup from November to December 18th. Or if they try to figure something out, maybe they just shut down all comp- together. And then just extend the league a little bit longer. All right. That's a possibility. But nonetheless, I mean, I think that, if I'm not mistaken, games are going to be extremely early. All right. It's all saying it's going to, someone's saying it's going to be like 2002 when they had the tournament in Korea and Japan. Games are like early, like middle of the morning type of things. All right. That's going to be tough if it is. Yesterday I was checking it out. I figured that maybe it'd be kind of like this, five in the morning and all that. But nonetheless, I mean, it's not going to be fun. Okay. But thankfully, we got DVR and all that. But, I mean, as far as Sunday's final, France has got to keep doing what they've been doing. Don't really change anything up. I'd throw out the same starting 11. All right. And as for Croatia, you got to defend on set pieces here. All right. I mean, you gave up a goal to England. You held your own after that. But nonetheless, story of the tournament has been set pieces, set pieces, set pieces. All right. Croatia can do well to defend. And speaking of defend, all right, you got Leverin saying that he should be respected among being one of the best defenders in the world. All right, a bit of a high claim there, but he claims that took he took Liverpool. He took Liverpool to the Champions League final, and he's gotten Croatia to the World Cup final. So he deserves to be talked about as being one of the top defenders in the world. It's a bit of a stretch, if I'm not mistaken. I'd say that that front three of Liverpool. Mo Salah mostly did take Liverpool to the final. And as far as here, I mean, you do got that guy, Modric, who does tend to play pretty well in the midfield, who I think got you to the World Cup final. But that's how Levin wants to remember it, and that's how Levin wants to remember it. All right. But nonetheless, I mean, we'll see how good he really is. All right. Mbappe running right at you. I mean, are you going to be able to stop him, or are you going to look like how you did this before this year with Liverpool? Okay. He's got to deal with Griezmann. He's got to deal with Mbappe. I mean, it's going to be tough. And like I said, set pieces, who better than Giroud? Is Giroud actually even playing in this game? I think I might have got him mixed up with someone else because I was thinking that maybe he was out due to yellow card accumulation or even um, due to injury. I can't remember if that was him or if I'm just completely getting them mixed up with someone else. Let me see real quick if I could check that. I don't think I can right now. But nonetheless, like I said... I mean, it's going to be real interesting for this match. I mean, Croatia has played well. France is the obvious favorite. But, I mean, Croatia getting this far means they do definitely have a chance. All right. So, we'll see if they're able to do it. But, nonetheless, I mean, you got to figure that France is going to be, is going to be, how do you say, um, coming away with a win. I mean, this has been, like I said, round, um, the group stage, France looked terrible. All right. Kind of scared me. Round of 16, um, they've been dominant. All right. So, we'll see if they can get the job done. I'm going to go with France. By a score of 2-1. Maybe, actually, I'll go 3-2. Actually, no, I'll go 2-1, considering the fact that France have played so well so far in the round of 16. I'm not expecting Croatia to put up too many goals. And as far as England and Belgium, if both first teams play, I will go Belgium 3-1. All right. It's going to be a bad game for England. Kind of like Brazil last year, or last World Cup, where they lose 7-1 to Germany. And then it's kind of like that loss has broken you to the point where... 
you got to play the Netherlands next, but they end up losing that one 3-0. It's going to be that kind of game for England. So we'll see how it all goes down. England play tomorrow at 7 o'clock Pacific time. And then we got the World Cup final on Sunday at 8 o'clock Pacific time. So we'll see how it all goes down. But nonetheless, we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to be talking about DeMarco Murray and the fact that running backs just get thrown away once they hit 30. So stay tuned for that, and I'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. So far today, we've talked World Cup, and we've talked Jimmy Butler and Isaiah Thomas. Now, we move on over to the NFL, where if you're a running back, you won't have a career past 30. And that's just the cold, hard truth. All right. DeMarco Murray has realized that. He is 30 as of right now and has decided to retire because no one... Wanted to sign him. All right. Drafted him in 2011. Out the league in 2018. What a shame that is, huh? I mean, DeMarco Murray at one point was one of the best running backs in the league. And I guess we can ask the question, how much of that was contributed to the fact that Dallas's offensive line is what? Got him there, but I mean, nonetheless, I'm looking at his best year. That was in 2014. He ran the ball nearly 400 times. That's absurd. All right. 392 carries in 2014. 845 yards, 13 touchdowns. Led the league in each of those three categories. Also led the league in yards per game. And... Dallas just decided, you know what? We're moving on from you. You can go to Philly. All right. Philly obviously didn't work out. He only spent a year there. Okay. Then he ends up in Tennessee. His first year with Tennessee, he did run the ball 293 times for nearly 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns. 2017, I mean, look, at he's, he's barely even a year or a couple years removed from that 2016 season. He ran for nearly 1,300 yards, and he's out the league. Okay. Literally two seasons ago, he ran for nearly 1,300 yards, and the NFL says, yeah, we don't want you anymore. Okay? Isn't that a bit ridiculous? I mean, three years ago, all right, three seasons ago, Adrian Peterson ran for 1,500 yards. Since? He's out the league right now. Okay? NFL doesn't love you once you hit 30 if you're a running back. And... That's just the cold hard truth there. Okay. I mean, Adrian Peterson, one of the greatest running backs of all time, doesn't get an opportunity because he's 33. All right. I mean, it's ridiculous a bit. Like I said, 2015, 1,400 yards, nearly 15, 11 touchdowns. 327 yards, just like DeMarco Murray in 2016, led the league, all right, in all those categories, rushing attempts, yards, and touchdowns, just three seasons ago. And now, no one's even kicking the tires on him. 
All right. Dude might be the greatest running back of all time if we're talking about just pure strength, speed, all that stuff just mixed into one because that's what Adrian Peterson is. All right. Leonard Fournette kind of reminds me of that, but I'm not going to go out and jump to say that Leonard Fournette's going to be one of the greatest running backs of all time. Okay. But nonetheless, I mean, DeMarco Murray a couple weeks ago was talking as if, yeah, he's going to be signing soon. All right. He's got teams asking about him and all that, and it seemed like he was going to find his team soon, and all of a sudden he retires. So obviously that wasn't true, the fact that teams were still looking at him and all that, because obviously no one was. I'm sure if there was, he would have signed, or maybe it was just the point where your teams were saying, yeah, I'll bring you back, but it wasn't necessarily a good fit for Murray, and it wasn't necessarily anything for him to sign. All right? I mean, the NFL's rough. That's why they call it not for long. I mean, DeMarco Murray, like I said, at one point was one of the best running backs in the league and only lasted, lasted about seven years in, in the league. All right. Adrian Peterson has only lasted 11. Okay. Isn't that ridiculous? I mean, one of the greatest running backs of all time. Can't find a job. Guy like DeMarco Murray, two seasons removed from a 1,300-yard season. Out the league. I mean, it's crazy. All right. And that's why... I think that a lot of these running back records, like we got Frank Gore, who's about to become the fourth leading rusher of all time. Okay, a lot of those records are going to stay intact because, I mean, you don't have running backs playing that long anymore. Okay, I think Le'Veon Bell's currently 25, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check Le'Veon Bell's current age. All right. Let's see. I think he's currently 20. He's still pretty young, I think. He's 26 right now. Okay, Le'Veon Bell's going to get one more contract. And once that contract's up, I don't really see anyone bringing him on. Okay. And he's only played, what, five seasons so far? So he's going to get that second contract, but after that, I mean, he's going to be done. No one's going to have an opportunity to go out and catch Frank Gore or catch Emmett Smith or anything like that. All right. We're at an age where, yeah, running backs are starting to get picked up in the first round again. But nonetheless, I mean, you only got about an eight-year career span, lifespan in the NFL. All right? Once you hit 30, I mean, you're done. Doesn't even matter what you did the season before or anything like that. Okay, Le'Veon Bell, one of the best running backs in the league right now. I mean, let's say he runs for 1,300 yards, 1,200 yards. In his, year, in his age 29 season, let's say he runs for 1,000, year 30, age 30, he's done. Okay. And, I mean, it's not necessarily fair, but teams just don't value running backs the way they used to anymore. Okay? It's true. It's a passing league here. All right, that's why we got quarterbacks lasting until they're 40 and all that. Running backs, I guess, are expendable. All right? And... It's tough, but nonetheless, that's the way it goes. That's why you need guys like Le'Veon Bell to get paid the $14, $15 million a year that they want because you're not going to be in this league for much longer. All right? Quarterbacks, if you're good, you probably last the league about 15 years. If, yeah, if you're good. You don't even have to go out and win Super Bowls or anything like that. Just as long as you can show you can get wins, it will last about 15 years. So obviously, you have a lot more opportunities to make money. These running backs, I mean, right now, the highest paid one is making about $8 million per year. Okay, that's Devontae Freeman. Obviously not anywhere near what a quarterback gets or anything like that. Even receivers are getting paid way more. Okay. So running backs across the league are disrespected. I mean, you got the um, Packers who, since Amon Green left, decided, you know what? We don't need running backs, okay? We'll just throw a bunch of different guys out there. It'll work. Same with Seattle, okay? I mean, they drafted Rashad Penny in the first round this year, but since Martin Sean Lynch was gone, I mean... It was just basically, okay, this guy, let's pick this guy up off the street, see what he could do for us. Okay. So I don't think, don't be fooled with this whole running back positions coming back. Okay, because they're still throwing you out in the garbage once you turn 30. But I mean, running back is a tough position to play, and these dudes, usually around the age of 30, do tend to break down, so I do understand stand it. But I mean, like DeMarco Murray, are we sure that this guy can't do anything else? Are we sure that he's washed up and he's done? Alright, I wouldn't say so. 
But nonetheless, I guess the NFL believes it. And I mean, DeMarco Murray's a guy who could come back out of retirement. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. There's always running back injuries and all that. And like I said, DeMarco Murray is an old, old. He's just barely 30. He still has something left in the tank. All right, but obviously he's going to have to wait for something. So we'll see if he does make it back to an NFL team. I mean, like I said, I don't think he'll be turning the paperwork to Roger Goodell anytime soon or anything like that. But nonetheless, it is a sad life for running backs, and that's probably the most disrespected position in football. I'd say running backs, offensive guards. Mm, let's see. I think those are the two the most disrespected positions. Because I mean, sometimes you'll see teams with terrible guards, and they just won't even try and upgrade that position. They're just like, oh, he's not good. Oh, well, we'll get around it. All right. So, we'll see. Like I said, I could see DeMarco Murray ending up with some team this season. I don't think he's retired, retired yet, so... Who knows, but nonetheless, I mean, we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to be talking about anything else going on in the world of sports, so stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. So far today, we've talked World Cup. All right, that tournament's coming to an end on Sunday, sad as it may be. All right, let's see. When the World Cup's over, we just got baseball going on, huh? We do. I mean, Summer League. Summer League, they're already at the um, already doing their little tournament thingy. So that's going to be over in a week. Yeah, so it'll just be baseball time. I mean, we got the All-Star break coming up and everything. All right, this is a real tough time in sports. All right, July. I think July might be the worst sports month. Let me see. You got July. Okay, August, we got preseason and baseball. September is when the NFL season starts. So from September to February, you're covered because you got the NBA too. All right, even when the Super Bowl ends, you still got basketball. So from then to June, okay. So I'd say, yeah, July's got to be the worst because, I mean, there's only one sport going on. And plus, baseball just hasn't done well to market itself at all. Like, if I was baseball, I mean, July is my month. Okay, I'm doing whatever I can to market anything I can. Mike Trout, one of the greatest of all time. But nonetheless, it hasn't always worked out that way. Okay, July definitely is the worst sports month of the year. But nonetheless... Okay, we'll get through it. World Cup is great as it's been. It only here every four years, so we'll just do what we do for those other three years. Okay. So who knows? But nonetheless, we got tennis going on right now. Like I said earlier, Kevin Anderson won the longest semifinal matchup of all time in Wimbledon. All right, beat John Isner in five sets. Then we got Nadal and Djokovic still playing in theirs right now. You got them tied. Both won a set apiece. Currently 2-2 on their third set, so we'll see how that one plays out. I mean, by the time I'm done recording this, I don't think we'll be done. All right, tennis does take a while for their matches to end, but nonetheless, yeah, this should be going on by the time I finish recording this. So we'll see how that goes later on. And then let's see what else is going on in the world of sports right now. Let's check yesterday's MLB scores. All right. And let's see. Yesterday, we had... Which was Thursday, we had the A's beating the Astros once again, 6-4. Rockies beating the Diamondbacks, 5-1. Phillies beating the Orioles, 5-4. Pirates beating the Brewers, 6-3. 
the Red Sox beat the Blue Jays 6-4. Red Sox now hold the most wins before the All-Star break ever. The Orioles held that record before with 65 wins. Red Sox currently at 66 and three more games to go to add to that. Okay, Yankees beat the Indians yesterday 7-4. Yankees now 61-31. and Let's see, the Nationals beat the Mets 5-4. I mean, that's just like clockwork. All right, the Twins beat the Tampa Bay Rays 5-1. We have the Dodgers beating the Padres 3-2. And the Angels beating the Mariners 11-2. So obviously the A's build up some ground there. As far as the games going on today, we got Rangers, Orioles, Brewers, Pirates, Red Sox, Blue Jays once again. Second game of the Yankees and Indians series. Mets, Nationals, Phillies, Marlins, Diamondbacks, Braves, Royals, White Sox, Rays, Twins, Astros, Tigers, Reds, Cardinals, Mariners, Rockies, Cubs, Padres, Angels, Dodgers, and then the A's and Giants start their Battle of the Bay series today. We had Bumgarner going up against Edwin Jackson. This one's in San Francisco. Once this little series is over, they'll be heading over to Oakland to continue that phase of the Bay Bridge series. Is the Battle of the Bay or is the Bay Bridge series? All right. I think we need some clarity on that. Let's see real quick what the standings are looking like once again. We have the Red Sox still three and a half games up on the Yankees right now. Five more wins, two less losses. All right. So that'll all balance out in a while. Cleveland, of course. I mean, they're leading theirs. You don't need an update there. Astros up three games on the Mariners, eight games on the A's. Let's see, NL East, you got Philly, who's up a half game on the Braves, five and a half on the Nationals. AL Central, the Brewers are now only a game up on the Cubs, six and a half on the Cardinals, and then the Dodgers have overtaken first place in the NL West. All right, currently up a half game up on the Diamondbacks, three games up on the Rockies and Giants. Let's check those wild card standings real quick. So let's see, we have the Yankees obviously in that first wild card spot. You can pretty much keep them there. They'll stay there unless they overtake Boston for that AL East lead. And if Boston's not leading AL East, they'll be taking that first wild card spot. And then like I said, we got the Mariners currently up five games on the A's. All right. A's just got to continue to win. I mean, A's have been a real good road team as far as playing at home. Not great. I mean, they're only three games over 500. All right. But nonetheless, I mean... 7-3 and three in their last 10. Played extremely well. Plus 25. Run differential compared to a Mariners plus 5. Alright. I do think the A's will catch the Mariners. Whether or not they'll be any, finishing up in that second wild card spot remains to be seen. But I do think there will be a time where the A's do catch up to the Mariners and they will overtake that spot. It's just a matter of whether or not they'll be able to keep that spot. Alright. And then over in the National League, the Cubs occupy that number one wild card spot by a game and a half. And then you get the Braves with that second spot. Game and a half up on the Diamondbacks. Four games up on the Cardinals. Also, four games up on the Rockies and Giants. Five up on the Nationals. And that's pretty much it right there. You got the Pirates who are eight games back, but they're under 500, so it don't really matter. All right. So that's how it's going in the MLB. Like I said, we got the All-Star break coming up soon. Let's see. Anything else going on in the world of sports right now? There's not too much else right now. All right. Let's see. Marco Murray, like I said, he retired. We talked yesterday about Terrell, or Hall of Fame and Terrell Owens. Hall of Fame is not going to be honoring Owens individually at their little, semi or their little ceremony. I... I did not think that Terrell Owens versus the Hall of Fame was going to be one of the biggest feuds of the year, but nonetheless, here we are. Okay. It's a bit ridiculous, but nonetheless, I mean, drama and the NFL go together like peanut butter and jelly. And this isn't necessarily an NFL problem, is it? Or is it just a Hall of Fame problem? Okay, because it is the Pro Football Hall of Fame, so I don't think the NFL really has too much of a say in this. All right. But nonetheless, it is ridiculous not to honor Terrell Owens because he is going into your Hall of Fame. Like, what are you gonna, like, when you gonna, when you put his little um, statue thing, what do you want to call it, a bust in the Hall of Fame little museum thing, whatever you want to call it? You gonna hide Terrell Owens? I mean, he's gonna be there. You might as well acknowledge the fact that yes, Terrell Owens is in this class. Okay, because I'm curious. I mean, I haven't watched a Hall of Fame ceremony in a while, and I might just have to watch this one just because. But nonetheless, I mean. Are they gonna have like it's it's ridiculous like you know, like they're gonna congratulate like Ray Lewis and all those guys but not Terrell Owens, okay? As much as they might not must not like him, he is going into that Hall of Fame class. He is part of the 2018 NFL Hall of Fame or foot Pro Football Hall of Fame class. You can't just leave him out. I'd say, all right. But NFL the Pro Football Hall of Fame feels inclined to, so I guess that's what we got going on, okay? And it is it is. A bit tiring. Okay. I don't understand why. 
But nonetheless, I mean, like I said, drama in the game of football, whether it's the NFL or the Hall of Fame, goes together perfectly. All right. So let's see anything else going on right now. That's pretty much it. Let's see any other NBA news. All right. The Knicks, I think they might have finally got it right. Well, I mean, obviously they got it right with Kristaps Porzingis, but Kevin Knox looking like he's going to be a star for that team. He's been playing real well in summer league. All right. Actually, I think their summer league's currently over since they lost to Boston the other day, but nonetheless, he was averaging about 21 points in these summer league games. Okay. Nuggets shed 21 mil in cap, sending Kenneth Farid and a couple of other guys to the Nets. Hawks added Jeremy Lin, so I figured now for sure Dennis Schroeder is going to be getting traded because, I mean, you can't keep three-point guards on one team. Let's see, anything else going on? Wayne Ellington returns to the Heat on a one-year deal. Marcus Smart, still a free agent. I'm expecting him to return back to Boston. Whether or not that's him signing a qualifying offer, that's just Boston offering him a new deal, remains to be seen. And if I'm Boston, I mean, there's really no incentive, like no point of offering him a deal right now since he's a restricted free agent. But nonetheless, I mean... Marcus Smart's a huge part of that Celtics team, and I feel like losing him would hurt them, even whether it's this season or next season. So if I'm them, I'm going to try and lock him up long term. Obviously, not to the point where you can't lock up Kyrie. Okay. But, I mean, other than that, that's pretty much all that's going on right now. I really do like this Nuggets team, though. A lot of depth. I mean, you got Jamal Murray, who's going to be the starting point guard, I'm assuming. Isaiah Thomas behind him. Okay, you got Gary Harris at the two. Um, let's see, you'll probably be starting Will Barton at the three. You got Michael Porter Jr., who you could bring off the bench. All right, Paul Millsap there, Nikolai Jokic. I mean, they're going to have a real solid team. One thing that really scares me about them is defense. Can they play defense? Who knows? All right, but they will be doing a whole lot of scoring. So we'll see. Maybe they can sneak into the playoffs this year. But nonetheless, we're going to wrap it up here. Today we talked World Cup. We talked Jimmy Butler and Isaiah Thomas. We talked to Marco Murray, running backs at the age of 30. And we talked a bit about Wimbledon and the MLB. So... Thanks for listening to the GSMC Sports Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. I will be back on Monday, so stay tuned, and I will talk to you guys later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program